There is nothing but nothing more powerful than prayer. And prayer is not a desirable extra in the Christian life. It's commanded by God to be essential in everything we do. God says, here's my command. I want you to talk to me about everything. How good is your prayer life? Do we understand we're going to talk to God, the architect, the most powerful creator of everything in the universe? And he says, come and talk to me. Tell me what you want. No one has power with God who doesn't pray. And the question is, we're living in a society that has got us boundaried by all these demands of things we think we got to do. And the question is, do you pray? It is the most powerful thing in the universe. Nothing can take the place of prayer. It doesn't matter whether you've been saved 50 years, five years, or five minutes. God says, come to my throne room and talk to me. Jesus prayed. He lived a life of prayer. He didn't just teach about prayer. He didn't just sing about prayer and agree with prayer and nod at prayer. But he prayed, the Savior, the Son of God, God in the flesh, prayed. If Jesus had to pray, how much more do you and I need to pray? One of the most amazing things in all the scriptures is how much time Jesus took out for prayer. He only had three years of public ministry, yet Jesus was never in so big a rush. But what he had time to spend hours in prayer. He prayed before every difficult task confronting him. He prayed with regularity. Not a day began or closed on which he did not unfold his soul before his Father. The scripture says, pray without ceasing. This should be the motto of every true follower of Jesus Christ. Never stop praying, no matter how dark and hopeless your case may seem. With God, nothing shall be impossible. No task is too arduous, no problem too difficult, no burden too heavy for his love. I believe sometimes Jesus would pray, I'm disappointed, I'm hurt, I'm betrayed. But the greater horror is to be separated from the Father so the trials that I'm going through will not make me separate from you. They'll actually make me be one more with you. And, and what you have to do is get that attitude that I am not going to allow the stuff that's coming in my life and hitting my family or whatever it is you're dealing with, I will not allow it to cause the horrors of separation from the Father. If anything, it's going to make me pray more than I've ever prayed before. More people have quit praying because of disappointments in prayer than anything else. I've had people say to me, Pastor, I don't pray. I asked for this and God didn't do it. And I say, well, someday you may look back and be thankful God didn't do it. Prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven. Prayer is getting God's will done on earth. Prayer is powerful. Jesus prayed and so must you. You're going to be used by God if you pray. You're going to be anointed if you pray. You're going to have wisdom. If you pray, you're going to have the favor of God on your life. If you pray, you're going to have doors that open. You're going to have all that you need financially. If you pray, everything that you need in this life, God will supply. But you get on your knees and you learn how to pray and you can pray anything in heaven down to earth. You and I are what our prayers are. Our Christian life cannot be divorced from our prayer life. If our prayer life is weak, our Christian life is weak. The devil will see to it and the flesh will see to it that you and I don't feel like praying. The solving of every problem, the meeting of every need, the fighting of every battle, 
the accomplishment of every purpose is all wrapped up in praying. So when I wake up in the morning, I have a choice to make today. Do I want God to be in my life today? The question is, do I want his assistance? When I don't pray, what I'm saying in effect is, I don't need you. I'm not praying about my finances because I don't need you in my finances. I'm not praying about my marriage because I don't need you in my marriage. I'm not praying about direction because I can find my own direction. And so prayer, it says this beautiful, beautiful thing that God absolutely loves. I need you. I need you, Lord, in my life. And prayer says, I choose you as my shepherd. I choose to allow you into my life. I need you in my life today. And he leads those who will follow. And so we have to understand that prayer means I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you into my marriage. I'm inviting you into my finances. I'm inviting you into my decision making. I'm inviting you into my home. And God says 100% of the time I'll come. I'm just waiting for the invitation. It is impossible to know a person you don't talk to. And prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. How, do you, how are you going to know God if you don't talk to him? And obviously we know God through his word. He is his word. That's obvious. But the voice of God every day is circumstantial. He wants to talk to us about where we are right now. And so I pray to know God. He wants time with you. See, for, for a lot of my Christian life, early Christian life, I just didn't feel like God really loved me. I, I felt like he was mad at me all the time because I was always doing dumb stuff, you know. And aren't you glad that God's throne is a throne of grace? That we can go boldly to the throne of grace in the midst of our problems and difficulties and jump in daddy's lap and talk to daddy and that we don't have to deserve to talk to daddy because daddy just loves us because we're his. You don't have to deserve the presence of God. Jesus died so that you could get into the presence of God and not be perfect. Our perfection is in the blood of Jesus, not our good deeds. And so every day, I need him. When I need him the most, I deserve him the least. I don't have to get my act together so I can get into the presence of God. I can't get my act together till I get into the presence of God. And the blood of Jesus bought my way into the presence of God in the midst of all my difficulties. It's not about deserving. We don't deserve anything but we get everything because God loves us so much. He wants to talk to you. Our relationship with God is not who can run the fastest. Our relationship with God is about a daily walking with Him. It's daily praying. It's daily reading the Word. It's daily seeking Him. This is the key. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's a, a consistency of walking with God, talking with God. The beautiful thing about prayer is when we pray and commune with God, we don't have to climb the heights to get to heaven. God comes down to where we live. The beautiful thing about prayer is God doesn't expect you to ascend up, but if you will pray, he will come to where you are. The moment that we make that decision and we begin to talk to him in prayer, God says, I will find you. I don't care where you are. If you will pray and talk to me, I will find you. It doesn't matter where you are. You pray and he'll come to where you are. And I'll talk with you. And I'll commune with you. I'll ease your burden. I'll lift your worries. I'll unlock you and unshackle you from fear and torment. If you'll just come meet with me in prayer, I'll fill you with confidence and courage. And you won't be afraid. You, you won't listen to the voice of the serpent in the garden more than my voice. If you will pray and talk to me, I'll come where you are and I'll make that place a refreshing in your life. Oh, what needless cares we carry, all because we do not pray, all because we do not seek God's face, because we worry and we don't pray. 
When you're lonely, pray. When you're desperate, pray. When you've been disappointed, pray. When you're hurting, when you're bitter, when you don't understand, pray. Let your prayers match your problems. My number one priority is connecting with God. That's my number one priority. All of that other stuff will be all right if I connect with God.